Mrs. Wizard Z3 is done and we spent more in parts than we spent buying the whole car. Let's get started. If you guys have been following along, this is Mrs. Wizard's 1998 BMW Z3 that was bought for her not too long ago and it was in, it was in decent shape. But we went through, I'm pretty particular with my car or Mrs. Wizard's car, I want everything sorted. If it even looks like it's bad, throw it in the trash and get a new one. So all the things that we replaced, all the money that we spent on getting this thing sorted out, probably half of it was unnecessary. It was just done because I want it done so that she can enjoy the car and I don't get a phone call three months from now, hey, I'm broke down on the side of the road, blah, blah, blah. Being that I run a shop, I really don't have time for that. So. We did have time to just sort it and get it done. The list of parts is very long. Grimes actually did all the work. He's familiar with BMWs. He went front to back and it's a lot of stuff. We're going to cover that today. But before we dive in deeper, we actually have a package that was sent to us today from a van bug in Haroldsburg, Kentucky. This package actually just showed up today unannounced. So I had no idea what it was. I opened it up and I was like, what? I don't even understand what's going on or why this is here. So luckily there was some paperwork included with it. The first page says, pardon me, do you have any gray Poupon? Just in case you don't, I have enclosed a bottle so you can too be high society as you sit around your Thanksgiving table. He says his wife and him keep a bottle in their 1998 GMC because you never know when you're going to pull up beside a Rolls Royce and help a guy out. There's a very long list here of where they found this box. It's like an auction they went to or some sort of estate sale or something. There was just random box. They bought it and they went through it and rummaged through it. And it's like, I don't think we can even use this stuff. Let's send it to the car wizard. And I'm very thankful Van, his name is Van Bug. His last name is Bug. For sending this, uh, we're gonna go through it and see what we're gonna use or what we can do. Some of the stuff I can see we're gonna use right off bat. But one thing I noticed right off opening it, there's this little green glass Christmas tree. And then I realized, I know from experience, this is the old radioactive glass. It's actually called uranium glass, I think, from the 1930s or 40s. The glass itself is actually radioactive. And I actually happened to have a Geiger counter because you never know what you're going to come across. Imagine that, Mrs. Wizard. I had one in my toolbox. Wow, that's shocking, dear. So before we dive into the box, I have two really crazy things. Who knew that a Christmas tree was radioactive? And also, which is not in association with the package that came in today, who remembers the old Coleman lanterns when you go camping in the 1980s? You pump it up with the fuel and it would light the little mantles. Here are some of the old mantles that went to Coleman Lanterns. They are extremely radioactive. And you're holding them. And I'm holding a whole bunch of them. They're not bad extremely like they're going to hurt you, but they're very high radioactive compared to what you would think a mantle for a, a lantern would be. So I'll set those aside. Let's go ahead and scan our Christmas tree. Then I'll compare it to this and you guys can be amazed about these old Coleman Lantern mantles. All right, let's get this thing fired up here. Open up the testing wand, ready to go. I'll set it to times one setting. And if you just sit here and hold it, it's, you know, there's not much in the air. Once in a while, you'll get a, a reading. There, you heard one there. It's just from the sun or radiation from the earth, normal background radiation. Let's try out this little tree. You hear that, guys? I'll put it inside the tree. So there we go. This little glass decoration is actually radioactive, which, you know, no one usually knows that. It's just the old, that old green glass. Now, 
Are you prepared to be amazed how these little cloth mantles are radioactive? You ready? Isn't that crazy, guys? It's very high. Anyways, the only reason I'm talking about radiation and stuff is because when I saw the Christmas tree thing, I knew it's going to be radioactive. Let's continue on with the box. Well, this looks like a Rolls Royce fender cover. Well, that's nice. Let's continue on through the box. A new electric dash clock for a Rolls Royce Silver Cloud 1. Yep, it's a Smith's. So you can see there, that is a Smith's clock. I know that Smith's is the brand that made those clocks out of a Rolls Royce Silver Cloud. I have no idea what that's worth or... Maybe you can turn it into artwork, Mrs. Wizard. I most definitely can. Okay, well that's that. I'll try not to make it take too long here. I don't know why, but there's a pair of salt and pepper shakers. I have no idea what that goes to or what the story is there. Here's a little black sock that has, oh, the Grey Poupon. Do you pardon me, do you have any Grey Poupon? Well, I do now, thanks, Van. Another radioactive Christmas tree. There is a crescent wrench, some lenses, a mirror, an oil filter, a park lamp assembly, and a bunch of little cups that have Rolls Royces on them. Interesting. Well, anyways, let's head back to the Z3. Thanks again, Van. Last time we saw this, it was pretty dirty. It's, it's a little dusty right now, but it had water spots. It was in really bad shape as far as being dirty. And it was also a part in pieces and several other videos back. Mrs. Wizard's been driving it, enjoying it, and has it been doing well for you, Mrs. Wizard? It has been doing very nicely. Good. So let's go ahead and take a quick look around, then we'll hop under the hood, talk about a lot of the things we had to go through to get this thing sorted out. So as you can see, the headlamps are nice and clear again. They've been cleaned. They're a little dusty from dust, but we have a nice new BMW Roundel on the front. As we go around to the side, we can see new tires. These are decent tires. I ordered them. I figured it's a good street tire, but once they arrive, they look like they're almost like all-terrain tires or something. I don't know. It looks kind of odd, but it works. They're good tires, so we'll just leave them as is. So as you can see, we have the rear roundel replaced. You can see she has some little devil sticker thing on there. I thought you might appreciate that. Yep. We have both side roundels replaced as well. So all four have been replaced. Let's go ahead and hop under the hood. So Grimes had this all party at the intake off. He put the new CCV, new hoses. It's got new reservoir. The radiator's been replaced in the past. But we got new strut mounts. You can see on either side, those are brand new. There's some new hose here. There's lots of new stuff under the intake you really can't see, but it has new radiator hoses. It has a new water pump. Tons and tons of little stuff on here. Also, new spark plugs. Kind of did a tune-up on it. That's pretty much it on the top end, but it was quite expensive just getting to the parts. You can kind of see it down there. It's a little disc shape. Those are common to go bad on these, and so we went ahead and replaced it. Also, this Venos oil feed line, which is a common failure point, as Grimes pointed out on other videos, we replaced that as well. Brand new thermostat housing, along with those hoses. And then we'll go ahead and go into the interior. Okay, ladies and gents, in case you didn't see it the last time, this has 103,249 miles. So, and I've driven 139 and a half of them since it was reset, the trip pedometer was. So, that's how much I've done. And as we look, cleaned up everything. Everything has gotten nice and sparkly. This roundel did not get replaced, but it's in really good condition. Did just clean up everything. Everything in here was just kind of needing some refreshing. Just clean, just get everything polished. Everything's in good shape. One thing I did add was a nice little USB charger in there. And one thing I noticed is that if you leave it plugged in and the key is turned off and the key is out of the car, that will stay lit up. So I make sure I leave it out 
just a touch to make sure it doesn't actually drain the battery. One thing I did add is some specifically made, not OEM matte floor mats, because those are kind of unattainium for being 98, but I did find some that match very close to the original. But everything in here is looking good. The one area we do need to address is right there. I should not be able to put my fingers to the outdoors through the inside of my convertible top. But being that I have the top down on this when I'm driving it most of the time, it's not much of an issue. Otherwise, this is a very small car, so it has a very small interior review. But let's get this in the air and let the wizard show you what all we did on the underneath side. Well, let's start from the front and work our way back and see all the things we had to replace. Right off the bat, you can see steering rack boots right here. Tie rod ends. Lower control arms. Bilstein struts. Sway bar links. Sway bar bushings. Again, that's obviously going to be on both sides. We did brake pads as well. You can see everything over here has equally been replaced. No serious leaks or anything going on. Luckily, that's been solved. It didn't have any major ones before anyways, but it definitely is not going to now. So let's work our way back to the oil pan area. We did get an oil change, oil filter. You can see that this bushings here were replaced as part of the control arms as well. Those were completely shot. It steers much better now, doesn't it, Mrs. Wizard? It does. It does really good on the road. We did a valve cover gasket. Like I mentioned up front, we did a lot of work up top. The valve cover gasket was one of those. Here's our transmission. It has a tiny little seepage here coming from that seal shaft. It was really wasn't bad enough. I told them not to mess with that, but it's nothing worth tearing down all this stuff apart on it. We move back here, we can see that this drive shaft joint's been replaced. That's a new one. This one doesn't have a flex joint in the back. It's actually just a standard U-joint, which is luckily good. We can see an exhaust hanger. The old one was torn and the exhaust was literally almost touching the ground. Then we can come over here and we can see an more new Bilstein shocks, another exhaust mount. These sway bar bushings were fine, but we did replace the links, which are right here. We replaced the differential mount bushing there, which was completely collapsed and destroyed. It would kind of lurch when you put it into gear before, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, it kind of hop. Now it's totally solid. It does a good job. The CV boots are fine. We didn't mess with those. Again, over here we got pads, shock, links. Everything over there has been taken care of as well. So all these things add up really fast. When there's $70 here, $20, $50, $150, $200, it adds up really, really fast. Let's get this thing on the ground. So all the parts that I bought for this obviously didn't cost as much as it cost to buy the car. But if you had a shop do all the work for you, which so many people do, it can add up so fast. So if you buy one of these cars, five, six, seven, eight grand, somewhere around in there, and then you take it to a shop and say, sort it front to back, you can spend that much again. The reason why I'm kind of bringing this up is because we have a lot of people come in and they bring us a car to fix and we get them an estimate and we say, hey, I sp that's what I spent on the car. Anyone who's been around German cars for a number of years or has collected them or had several of them will also know that that's the case with these cars. They're very maintenance intensive, especially after 100,000 miles. Things really start adding up and start piling up really, really fast. So thanks again, Van, for the package you sent. And also I'm glad I got to introduce my Geiger counter to you guys and show you all the radioactive stuff going on in the shop. Kind of crazy, isn't it? That's kind of a wrap up of the Z3. It's running and driving and happy again. We got all the parts replaced that need to be replaced. Mrs. Wizard's happy. She's enjoying the car. 
And speaking of Mrs. Wizard, if you're curious about her videos, things she's got going on her channel, there's a link in the description below to go to Mrs. Wizard's Way. She's got lots of cool videos there. Make sure to hit the subscribe button there, and also, any of the tools we use in the shop is listed on our Amazon affiliates link in the description below as well. And anything you buy there, we get a small cut and really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button here, because we have many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.